Here we are again today in studio with more Million Dollar Business Answers for Very Tough Business Questions. And we are going to start out with my friend, Tom Garrett. Talk to me, Tom. Thank you, Myron, for the Q&A. A couple of questions. One, you've always said that everything is a, every principle is a microcosm of another principle. Sure. Uh, yesterday, I saw you about to take off in a Piper. I forgot the model. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a um, Navajo. It's a Navajo. Navajo, right? Uh, Navajo. On down to, I don't know, Sarasota yeah. or something like that. Wow. Okay, good. That worked then. Good. Yeah. yeah. So how has flying and what is it about flight and the principles related to that that connects with so many other things, especially as it wow. relates to business and income generation? That's such a great question. Now I get to geek out. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, um, I used to not like flying, <laughs> right? Which means I was scared <laughs> because it didn't make any sense. It didn't make sense to me. So I'm one of those people, I want to know all the details. And so like a dummy, I looked up how much does a 757 weigh fully loaded? A quarter of a million pounds, 250,000 pounds. That's crazy. How much does a 747 weigh fully loaded? 987,000 pounds, almost a million pounds, fully loaded, fuel, passengers, all that. They had to figure out how to keep the tires from blowing out on a 747 when it lands, and they figured out if they fill the tires with nitrogen, because nitrogen gets cold under pressure, when they land, the tires would get cold instead of getting hot. All of that did not help me want to fly anymore, <laughs> right? But um, I decided the reason I was so unsettled when I got on an airplane was because it didn't make sense to me. But clearly it makes sense to people who fly airplanes, so maybe I should just take flying lessons. So I decided to take flying lessons to learn why it works. And there are so many principles. So I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna go to my digital blackboard. There are so many principles about flying. And I've got, I've got my flight instructors here, so he, he, can, he, can tell me, he can tell me any place I'm off base, because I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be off base. Okay, my friend who's also my flight, he's not just my flight instructor, but he is my flight instructor. He, he teaches me, so he's teaching me stuff yesterday. Okay, so, so a couple things about an airplane. So, like, if you, if, you have a, if you have a plane, if you have a plane, right, this is a very rudimentary airplane. You have a wing on this side, right, and then you have, you have the is that elevators back there. Is that what that's called? Elevators. Okay, that's what I thought it was. So, so and then you got me up here doing Instagram. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, the first thing I found out was, the airplane wing is curved on the top. The reason, it's one of the reasons a plane will fly. Which that, okay, what does that have to do with anything? I'm, I'm gonna show you. So, so this, we're gonna call this an air molecule. When the air molecule hits the front of this wing, it splits. Half of the molecule goes that way, half of it goes that way. The air molecule has to come back together at the exact same time at the back of the wing. Okay, so it splits, goes in half. But because the top of the wing is curved and the bottom is flat, it has a larger surface area on the top of the wing than on the bottom of the wing. And so what you have to do is, in order for it to get here at the same time, the half of the molecule that goes across the top of the wing has to travel faster than the half of the molecule that goes under the wing. And because it has to travel faster, it creates less pressure than the one under the bottom, so above the wing is an area of low pressure. But below the wing is an area, naturally, of high pressure. Well, guess what? It's, 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 it's a law of nature. High pressure has to flow to low pressure. Did y'all pick up what I just said? High pressure has to flow to low pressure. Now, in your life and in your business, what causes high pressure? I think we call them Williams. And for short, we call them bills, <laughs> right? Okay, what causes low pressure financially? Income, right, or revenue, right? So we're gonna call it income. So one of the principles that relates to flight is in order for you to relieve your financial pressure and your business pressure, your income has to come in faster than your bills come in. One of the reasons people 
feel financial pressure is not because they don't make enough money, but simply because they don't make it fast enough. Everybody already makes enough money to be rich. They just don't make it fast enough. And because they don't make it fast enough, and what do I mean they don't make it fast enough? You are spending money all day, every day. All day, every day, and you get paid once a week and you're wondering why you can't get ahead. You're on the wrong side of that equation. Here's what you gotta figure out how to do. How can I, get, how can I figure out how to get paid all day, every day, and all night, every night? If I can figure out how to get paid all day, every day, and get paid all night, every night, then all my financial pressure goes away. And then my finances can fly like an airplane. Okay, so you got the dashboard. So you got inside the plane, you have the dash, right? And you have all kinds of instruments up here. You have your altimeter, right? That tells you how high you are, right? You have your, you have your, um, your ASI, uh, your A. SI, which is your airspeed indicator, tells you how fast you're going in the air. Uh, you have your attitude directional indicator, which is your ADI. You got your compass, which tells you what direction you're going. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff going on up there. Okay, but but these are some, these are some of the basic ones. Um, um, and you have your I don't, I don't know what the pitch indicator is, but it tells you whether you're leaning sideways or whatever. So so think about it. How high you are. In business, you have to know where you are relative to where you've been, just like in a plane. Your, your airspeed indicator, you have to know how fast you're going because if you're not going fast enough, you crash. If your income's not coming in fast enough in your business, your business crashes. Your attitude directional indicator, that's one of my favorites. The fact that they call it, so the attitude of the plane is whether or not it's pointing upwards, the attitude is up. If the, the plane is pointing downward, uh, let me do this a different way. If the nose is downward and the tail is up, the attitude of the plane is down. If the nose is up and the tail is down, the attitude of the plane is up. Well, what's really interesting about that is when people have a bad attitude, they're kind of looking down. They're kind of thinking down thoughts, right? When they're looking up, their attitude's up. They're looking up. Everything's bright, sunshine. But guess what? One of the problems people have, a lot of people have, is... They think too positively when things are going positive. And so they act like things can't ever go negative. But guess what happens when you get the attitude of the plane too high? The plane stalls. And guess what? When you start becoming overly optimistic and taking risks that are not managed well and are unnecessary, you're literally in danger of stalling out your business. So all principles are microcosm. These are just a couple. Like I could talk about thrust versus drag. I could talk about lift versus gravity. Like how can something, uh, 747, it weighs 987,000 pounds. How can that fly? It doesn't, it doesn't seem to make sense. If gravity says that what goes up must come down, like something, a, a city bus can't fly. It doesn't weigh a million pounds. So why does it fly? It flies because of aerodynamics, then thrust, and the thrust is greater than the drag. So when the plane's pushing this way with a, with a propeller or the jets, it's pushing this way, it's overcoming the resistance of drag. And that combined with aerodynamics creates lift, which pushes up, which is greater than gravity, which pushes down. Which, what does that show us? The only thing that can supersede a principle is a more powerful principle. And so that's why it's important for us to learn from a principally, principle-centered perspective. So those are, some of the, those are some of the things that have to do with an airplane that also have to do with your life and your business. Was that helpful? Very, very helpful. So. The, the other uh, question was related to something you spoke to a few moments ago okay. about the child in you. Yes. Communicating. With the little child, another child another and person. connecting and with. more. Well, that's a profound thing. I'd never heard anyone even address that. Okay. I wonder if you could expound on how we might access that part in us more I, uh, efficiently yeah. and more intentionally. Yes. Because that's profound. Well, first, to become aware is, like, is the first move, right? So you become aware of the fact that there's a little child in you and there's a little child in other people. And the little child in you is the part of you that has fun. That's the part that enjoys life. The stressed out part of you, no, they, man, they manufactured that, right? Um, and so the, the culture of hypnotic societal mechanism created that um, to distract you. And so, so it has to do with not just um, utilizing it, but just trusting it. How are you going to utilize it more? Just trust that it's okay. 
we, we learned that we have to be impressive. We learned it from our parents. We learned it from our teachers. We learned it from our boss. We learned, like everybody's trying to impress everybody. Well, impress, impressive, being impressive is not very impressive. And it's certainly not impactful. Because the reality is, any of us don't use deodorant, we stink. Anybody don't, like, you, you don't take a bath, you're dirty, right? You don't brush your teeth, your breath stinks. Who, who's that? Everybody. Right? So, why not just go through life, instead of going through life trying to prove to people that you aren't as low as they think you are, or that you're higher than you think you are, why don't you just go ahead and be who you are and let the chips fall where they may? I think that is, when I say let the little child in you, I'm like, sometimes the little child in me connects a little bit too much with the little child in me. <laughs> so, 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 but when I say that, I'm just talking about being real. I'm just talking about stop faking smart and faking cool so you'll be accepted. Like, I'm accepted in the beloved, which means I, I've received Christ as my Savior, so I, if God can accept me and I can't, then my, I'm literally saying my standard is higher than God's. How could that be possible? Or God accepts me and somebody else doesn't. I'm literally placing their opinion above his. You got a problem with me. You got a problem with the one who made me. Deal, take it up with somebody else. I, I, ain't got, I don't have any time for it. So God made us all unique. And if, if, it's really interesting because in Romans chapter 12, which we were talking about, which we were in the other, looking in the other day, one of the things it tells us that we should be doing as human beings in honor preferring one another, right? If I'm preferring you, like if I'm seeking your best interest, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes and make you think I'm something that I know I'm not. So hopefully that helps. In my pleasure. All right, who's next? Tim, talk to me, brother. Super. Back to uh, the Be Do Have. I, I know you're a big fan of Dr. Benjamin Hardy, and he talks about your future self. And so I'm on this journey. I, I really resonated with your story about going to Russell Branson's mastermind, sharing your ideas. Everyone's like, wow, oh my goodness, you know, and we're mesmerized by what you had to say. And you're like, why are these guys so wealthy? And, you know, I'm here struggling to. You know, he got a meager existence. Exactly. Yeah. So some Barely people, had enough money to be in the room. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's this idea that some people will s suggest if you, if you, you know, try to pretend or fake it till you make it, that's the way to become the person you want to be instead of, uh, you know, having an idea of this future self person and Living well, in that, living in that sense. I, I, I think the future self idea is a good idea. I think, I think, I think uh, something that probably would be good to happen even before you got there is for you to become aware of your present self and the value of your present self. So, more fake it till you make it. Eh, I'm not a fan. Uh, the, I, in fact, I believe that if you feel the need for other people to believe something about you, you're already in a danger zone, right? You're not owning your identity. You're, you're, you're reacting to the lie identity, which is what other people told you you weren't your whole life. You're creating a my identity, which is a fake alter ego to overcome their lack of understanding of you instead of just trusting in your true identity, which came from the, came from the ultimate I identity, the I am that I am. And if, if he is the I am that I am, then I am all that he says that I am, and I am nothing that he says I am not. And so I don't need to get my identity from the work that I do. I don't need to get my identity from how I look. I don't need to get my identity from how much money I make. I don't need to get my identity from how educated I am. I get my identity from the fact that I am made in the image of a great God. That's a great place to start. And he installed by nature, an aspect of his creativity inside of me that he gave to no other human being on earth, which means I am the only person who can do the thing I was put here to do. What happens is I believe all of us lose sight of that thing or maybe never get a glimpse of that thing because we're too busy reacting to our impressions of other people's impressions of us. And so I think what a person would be better off doing rather than faking it until they make it, is just take inventory of your gifts. 
Like you are good at something. You're probably good at multiple somethings. Most people who are good at things think, yeah, but I'm not good enough to do it for a living. How do you know you haven't even attempted? Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now. If I wanted to, (laughs) y'all looking at my face, right? Y'all can tell I'm serious. If I wanted to, I could become a pop star at 62. Uh, y'all laugh, y'all. <laughs> y'all can laugh, y'all want to. But I know exactly how I would do it. There are people who can play the guitar better than me and play the piano and sing. And the only reason the world has never discovered them is because they've never recognized themselves. If Neil Diamond could become a rock star, into body can. Now, some people love Neil Diamond. I'm, I'm not talking bad about Neil Diamond. His voice never did anything for me. I'm like, this, every time I heard a song by Neil Diamond, I just thought to myself, this dude makes money singing. That's crazy. <laughs> and you may have somebody like that that you think of, that you're like, that person makes money singing? How they make money singing, right? So, so, see, when we have our gift and then we start utilizing that gift to serve people, people start showing up to be served. Then you start charging them. That's real. If I wanted to be a pop star, if I, like, once I get, that, I don't want to be a pop star. I don't want to be any kind of star. Um, but if I wanted to be one, what I would do is I would, I would do covers of top 10 songs every month on YouTube. I would build an audience, do covers of top 10 songs because I would get views because they're top 10s. And then, and a cover is basically when you sing somebody else's song and play an instrument. So I do covers of top 10 songs. Then, in addition to doing covers of top 10 songs, once a month I release one of my own songs on, on my YouTube channel. And I'd probably give voice lessons or free guitar lessons, and I would send people to an opt-in funnel to get their free guitar lesson or their free voice lesson, and now their name's on an email list. And then once my channel got to a million subscribers, I would release an album for $10 with 10 songs on it. And if 10% of the people bought it, that'd be 100,000 people who would buy it for $10 and I made a million dollars when I released my first album. Part of that is already happening. Um, so, but you see what I'm saying? So the problem is people don't take inventory of their gifts. So they don't know, if, if, if I don't recognize my gift, how can I expect you to recognize it when the scripture clearly says, as in water, face answereth the face, so doth the heart of a man to a man. What does that mean? That means people don't see you through their eyes, they see you through your eyes. And until you start looking at yourself differently, nobody else is gonna start looking at you differently. And sometimes you need a catalyst, right? Sometimes you need somebody outside of you to see something in you that you couldn't see in yourself and then he's like, you see that in me? Okay, let's go. Now I can, it's, you can see it, I can see it, right? Does that make sense? And so, so it's more about just taking inventory of your gifts. And once you discover what it is, because a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before the great man. So once you discover what that gift is, then you develop that gift. You discover your gift, you develop your gift, and then you deploy that gift into the marketplace for a profit. And instead of faking it until you make it, once you find out what that gift is, you project it until you perfect it. I don't have, like, I, there are speakers that are way better speakers than me. One of them just came in the room, Dr. Del Toro. And, 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 no, I, I ain't even gonna, I, I ain't gonna argue with you, bro. I'm not gonna argue with you. I ain't gonna, I ain't, we, we already, I'm older than you, so just younger, submit yourselves to the elder, okay? <laughs> okay, so there's, there are better speakers than me. I'm okay with that, but I'm projecting what I got until I perfect it. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna use what I got till I get some more. And if I don't get no more, I'm gonna keep using what I got. And see, your problem is you don't feel like you have enough, so what you have, you hide. I'm not saying you, Tim, but I'm just saying people. But you don't feel like you have enough, so because you don't feel like you have enough, what you do have, you hide. And because you hide it, you end up like the un- wicked and unprofitable servant who realized that his master reaped where he hadn't sowed and, and gathers where he hadn't strawed, And so I hid my talent in the earth because I was afraid, right? And he said, you knew that I reap where I haven't sown? You knew I gather where I haven't strong? You should have then given my money to the exchanger so that when I came back, I might receive my own with usury. God expects all of us to give him back more than he gave us because we did something with what he gave us. 
So I don't know if that's helpful or not, Tim. Okay, cool. Dr. Howard. Good morning. So I'm most of the way through uh, Dan Kennedy's book, The Business, and mm -hmm. uh, what he established in terms of the value of having a book is e extreme, but he did that way before social media mm -hmm. existed. Well, and he doesn't do social media. You got to <laughs> add that to it, too. Right. Uh, but you do social media, and I see now the combination of social media in with having the value of the book. Um, and then you mentioned this morning, which I didn't know, that you use Instagram. I call uh, them Instagram infomercials. That's what inf I call them. Infomercials. Um, and then you have YouTube. Uh, how do you tie that in to uh, your book as you begin your book funnel, your social media? And which works best, the, or, or YouTube? Or do you combine both? Um, they work differently for different things. So how do I tie social media in with my books? Yes. Um, so we, we create, so we create in the video promotions. So in my YouTube channel, like in my, in a YouTube video, we may insert a promotion that I do for a book. So we just recorded, like, I'll sit right here and record a, hey, if you haven't read Boss Moves, you know, this book right here is two hours of coaching for entrepreneurs. If you paid me to sit down and coach you for two hours for the first time, I would teach you the stuff in this book. You'd have to pay me $80,000. I get paid $40,000 an hour for coaching. You can pay me the $40,000 an hour. I'll take it. You can pay me $80,000 and talk to me for two hours, or you can buy this book for $30 plus $9.99 shipping and handling domestically and $25 shipping and handling internationally. I'm okay with either one. Do the one that serves you at the highest level, but this book will change your life. I've got one client up in Canada. He bought this book. He implemented what he read and in two months made $800,000 from these principles in this book that he paid $30 for. He came back and said, you know what? I think I need to join your inner circle, your $155,000 inner circle, because that helped me that much. I can't imagine what that'll help me do. And this dude has had, I, I'm pretty sure he's had a million dollar day. I know he's had several multi hundred thousand dollar days. So I might do a video like that, put it in a YouTube video where I just interrupt myself in the middle of a YouTube video and talk about that book. So that's one way I use social media. Um, I might do a YouTube short. Like, one of the things that you don't want to do on social media, though, you don't want to, every time you show up on social media, make an offer, right? Um, so, so, you know, Gary V has the jab, 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 right hook. So every time you, for every offer you make, you do three, like, posts that just give people value. Well, I like to, I, I like give, 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 ask. I, I'm, I want to make sure that I am giving people, people are not coming to my YouTube channel because they want to buy something from me. They're coming to my YouTube channel because they want to learn something from me. Every now and then, I will let them know that I have something for sale. Same thing on my Instagram. People aren't coming to Instagram to buy something from me. But every now and then, I will let them know that I have something. So, so, so that's what we do um, as far as using social media. Plus, I'll do a live on YouTube every couple of months. I'll do, go live on YouTube and do a special promotional giveaway thing just to gain subscribers. We do, we've done that a couple of times. Um, on Instagram, in addition to stories, I already told you how I take stories. Somebody posts a story about the, the, the Boss Moves book, then I'll t take their story, post it in my story, and put a link to the book. So that's one thing that I do. Another thing I do, every now and then, I'll go live on Instagram. But when I go live on Instagram, I go live on Instagram to promote the Make More Offers Challenge. So. That challenge, probably, we probably have about 100 tickets sold so far. Like, the tickets just come in every day, right? But when we get a little bit closer, I'll just do a push, do everything to get it up to two, 300 tickets sold, and then we do the challenge. So I use social media for that. Um, I go live on Instagram, like a live infomercial, like a telethon used to be on television, right? So, so that's how I use Instagram and YouTube. I, I think the most valuable thing that any of us can do on social media is what I call community service content, creating content that we created for the people that we're creating the content for, for the audience. My video content needs to be based on what they wanna watch, not based on what I wanna create. The biggest problem authors make, the biggest mistake authors make, they write the book they wanna write instead of the book the marketplace wants to read. The biggest mistake entrepreneurs make is they go out in the marketplace, they sell the product or service they want to sell instead of the service or product or service the marketplace wants to buy. I don't, want to, I don't have anything that I'm so in love with that I just have to tell the world whether they're willing to pay me or not. I can keep all that to myself.
I want to write the books you want to pay to read. I want to, I want to create the courses you want to pay to learn. Right? So I, every, see, most business owners think of the marketplace. I think from the marketplace. I think from the marketplace, and then I come back and think of my knowledge base. What in my knowledge base can I use to serve this segment of the market? Is that helpful, Doc? So I don't know if this is a bigger question. Mm -hmm. um, so I really understand the value of the book. Um, and then now you're showing the value of social media. Mm -hmm. So a lot of entrepreneurs are as the front for their, no, to gain more customers. Right. Um, is there value with definitely adding a book to that, to that space, even though social media might get the job done? I, well, they're two, they, they're two, two, it's like saying which is better, a hammer or a saw. It depends on whether you want to drive a nail or cut a board. Yeah, you, 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 right? you, you, yeah. you mix it, so I think that, right. that's I, incredible. That's, that's, yeah, the synergistic effect of both is unparalleled. Nothing, nothing will promote your brand and create an army of customers or clients for you better than having a book that is well-written that transforms somebody's life. Yeah. So that's, why? Because an educated client or customer is your best customer. All right, Sharice, talk to me, sister. Um, good morning. Good morning. All right, so. It's all good. Okay, so it's actually a follow-up to a question I asked last week. Okay. All right, so we were talking about uh, creating a story and the avatar uh -huh. and that concept. So in the past, you talked about either leading people towards pleasure or pulling them away from, from pain. pain. Yeah. So my question is, how do you decide? Which uh, one? Yes. Oh, that's easy. You only want to lead cold traffic that you... So the, the purpose of leading people away from pain, the whole idea of leading people away from pain is not for the purpose of selling. It's, the purpose, it's for the purpose of generating leads. If you want to generate leads to cold traffic. Let me define cold traffic. Cold traffic is somebody who does not know you exist. They do not know what you do. Um, they did not know that you had a solution for their problem. They may not even know they have a problem. Uh, they probably know that part, but they may not. And so when you create a lead magnet, something free that you're giving away to somebody who does not know you, if you lead them towards pleasure, they will not trust you. If you attempt to lead them towards pleasure, they will not trust you. But if you attempt to lead them away from pain, they will. So instead of, let's say I teach business, so if I create a lead magnet that says seven steps to seven figures, that's not gonna convert very well because people are gonna say that sounds like a scam. But if I say the seven biggest mistakes business owners make that keep them from seven figures, we'll probably, that, that headline will probably get 10 times more people to say yes and give me their name and email address. So once they opt in and they consumed my lead magnet and it's impacted their life, which means I should never give away anything as a lead magnet that I could not have sold for a profit and they still would have been happy with it. If you give it away because it's junk, all you're doing is letting folks know that you, you got junk in your trunk, right? You junk, right? You sell junk. Well, I don't want to sell junk. So what do I want to do? I want to sell good stuff. So when I sell, how do I sell good stuff? By giving good stuff away. That's why one of my favorite comments on my YouTube channel, I can't believe we get all this information for free. Exactly, that's the point. That's the point. So once they opt in, once they know you like you and trust you, then you can lead them towards pleasure all day long. My pleasure. Any more? All right, so I just wanna express uh, gratitude for all the value that you give out for free. My pleasure, brother. Um, so you said you bought guitar lessons off, <laughs> I think it was like an ad or something on? On YouTube. On YouTube? YouTube ad. So there's, you said it was like $8,000 or something? It was $8,800, but because I paid one payment, if I did payments, it would be $8,800, but I did one payment, so I got it for $7,800. Yeah. Okay. So there are people that are doing, are selling the same exact thing for probably like way less, maybe like $500 or something like Perhaps. that. Perhaps. That's potentially, ostensibly true. Right. So what, why? What made, what about that commercial made you? Someone Say, that can't afford it want to... Um... Okay, so, so a couple things. Um, I, I do my best to never price shop. In other words, I don't ever want to buy something because of how much it costs or does not cost. Okay, so that's, that's just side information to me, how much it costs. Um, to me, the most important information is how much is it worth. So... 
the thing that, first of all, it caught my attention because remember how I always talk about how um, everything is connected to everything else. Sometimes we just don't see the connection. Well, whoever, the people who created this course saw the connection between the guitar and language. So I've taken foreign languages, foreign language studies. I've, like I've studied Hebrew, like as an adult, right? And so the objective in language study is to get to a place of fluency in speaking and fluency in reading, right? So um, I, I've been playing the guitar since 1990, so I know how to play the guitar, and I know how to play bar chords, and I know how to play open chords, and I, I, know how, I knew how to play scale some. I knew, do you play the guitar? Is that why you're asking? Okay. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. So, so they talked about, this guy talked about how he was a computer programmer, and he, wanted to learn, he was stuck on his guitar, and he met this woman who taught him how to have fretboard fluency so he, he could make the fret, fretboard talk, basically. He knew where every note was on the fretboard. Like, okay, cool. And so they, he said, so I coded it into this software, so you, you, into, it's basically a membership site, and, and it teaches you a lesson, and then you mark where you are, one star, two star, three stars, or four stars, and then it tells you, um, it uses some basic, some, basically some accelerated learning techniques to teach you how to master the fretboard if you're an intermediate guitar player in three to six months and a year at the outside. Well, mastering the fretboard is something I've always wanted to do. I've always been fascinated by people who master the fretboard. But to be able to do it in three to six months, and I'm a high achiever, so if it can be done in three to six months, I already know I can do it in three. And if, if I can't, I believe I can, right? So I'm that guy. So is it worth, so when it comes to buying a transformation to somebody, to anybody, really, I believe, more information doesn't make it better, cheaper price doesn't make it better. More, more rapid transformation is the thing that makes it better. And so the fact that they were talking to me about, um, Having fretboard fluency in three to six months if I'm an intermediate guitar player who already knows my chords, that had me at hello. They could have charged me $15,000 and I would have paid it, right? Because the rapid transformation is the thing that I was paying for, not just I want to learn how to play the guitar or I want to learn scales or I want to learn triads or I want to learn bar chords or I want to learn how to play any song. I wanted, when the, the language that they put it in, fretboard fluency, made so much sense to me. After I watched the ad and I booked the call, I already knew I was gonna. Call, I already knew I was gonna buy it. I knew I was gonna buy it before I got on the call, because it told me that I was gonna get everything that I've always wanted in one place in the guitar. Does that make sense? So, so are you a guitar? Are you a music teacher? Do you teach music? I was asking that because it's kind of blurry to me how people struggle. To sell something for five hundred dollars and somebody else sells it for yeah, eight thousand. Yeah, it's, it's like what what are they doing? What what are they doing different? To okay, that, so let me answer that question too, because that's a different question. If I may, may I answer that question too? The reason people struggle at selling things at a lower price is because they don't understand what they're selling. They think they're selling a guitar lesson. They think they're selling the product, or they think they're selling the course, or they think they're selling the service. They think they're selling the product, or they think they're selling the pieces. So they might name all of the things they're gonna, you're going to learn. You're going to learn triads. You're going to learn bar chords. You're going to learn power chords. You're going to learn five bar blues. You're going to learn. You're going to learn. Um, you're going to learn the major scale. You're going to learn the minor scale. You're going to. That that's that's a bunch of stuff. There's nothing in any of that that makes me want to buy anything. I don't want to buy somebody's product. I don't want to buy somebody's pieces. You get so many hours of your life with me. I don't want your. I don't want your person. Here's what I want. I want to pay off. The reason people who sell things for more money are able to sell things for more money is because, number one, they can clearly conceive the, what the payoff is going to be for the person they're selling to. Number two, they can clearly convey in their words what that payoff is going to be. If the, if the payoff that they're conveying is bigger than the price they have to pay, they'll always buy. The reason the people who are having, struggling to sell their music lessons or whatever their thing is for $500, the reason they're struggling is because they're selling the lesson, they're not selling the payoff. They're not selling the transformation. The only thing anybody ever wants to buy is a bridge to get them to the destination that's otherwise impossible for them. Does that make sense? So would you say that um, whether or not, if you, if you sell the transformation, 
just price doesn't the, matter. The pre well, whether okay, whether okay. they buy or not just depends on if they have the money. Correct. Correct. Okay. If you do a good job conveying the transformation in a way that they believe they can have it, the only thing, and if it's a transformation they desire, the only thing that would keep them from buying it is not having the money, and that doesn't stop everybody. Some people will buy even if they don't have the money. They'll figure it out. Just like you want, we've all wanted stuff in our lives before that we didn't have the money for. What do we do? We figured it out. So when the transformation is important enough for them, they will figure it out. It doesn't matter what it is. Like when I bought my Rolls Royce, for instance, right? I wanted to get, I wanted to get a, a loan. But I hate, if there's one thing I hate, two things I hate. I hate hassle and I hate wasting time. And so... I'm filling out all these applications, all these people are saying, well, wait, we'll get back with you, we'll get back with you, we'll get back. I'm, I'm, I got sick of waiting. So I just wrote a check. I'm done. I'm done waiting. I don't want to, like, I don't want to, I don't want to use any more mental bandwidth. I don't want to think about this anymore. I gave y'all a chance to make interest off of me. You didn't do it. Shame on the devil and you, right? So I don't, people who, won't, like, for me, hassle, like, I'll take my family to Eddie V's and I might pay $700 for dinner and give a $150 tip, which sounds insane for a meal, right? Why would I do that? I'll do it because I like the level of service. It's the exact opposite. It's like the extreme opposite of being hassled. And so I will pay not only not to be hassled, but I'll pay a lot for the extreme opposite of being hassled. Does that make sense? Because that, for me, is the transformation I want. I want to, like, I love the food at Bahama Breeze. I love it. I love Bahama Breeze. They have this salad with the salmon in it. I don't, I don't even remember last time. I, don't, I just don't go there because their management is terrible. Their customer service is terrible. For, terrible for what I like. And I feel like every time I go in there, they hassle me about something. I'm like, I, this is stupid. I'm paying y'all. Y'all ain't doing me a favor, right? So, but I go to Eddie V's. Oh, hey, Mr. Golden, Mr. Golden. Hey, let me, let me hey, Mr. Golden, Mr. Golden. And oh, we got your table ready for you. Oh, yeah, we have the private dining room ready. That's what I want. And if it costs more, okay. Does that make sense? And, and, and here's what some people say. Yeah, you do that because you can afford it. But maybe, maybe I can afford it because I do that. And what I mean by that is because I've created a standard of what, I, what is acceptable to me and what is unacceptable to me, I've created a life that gives me what's acceptable and leaves everything else out. Like you could, anybody in here could raise the standard of what's acceptable for them. And I'm not talking about Eddie V's or flying private jets. I'm just talking whatever your thing is. Whatever the thing is you desire to have, decide this is the only thing that I'm willing to settle for. And whatever you're unwilling to settle for, just don't put up with it anymore. Just I'm not, if I have to pay more, okay, I have to pay more. But at least when I'm done paying, I have what I want, right? A lot of people, for instance, I get, we got all these people running around here. Like, Jose's over there taking sneaky shots of me and you. You didn't even know he was there, right? That's how, Jose's over there. Karina's back there doing our social media stuff. Larry's back there pushing buttons. I don't even know what the buttons do. Um, who else? Some, is there anybody else here on the team right now? Okay. Marima's in Canada taking care of stuff, and Rob's on vacation. But, like, we got all these people running around. Zach and Laura, their house doing stuff right now. And... A lot of people say, well, you, man, you could outsource all of that. I could. But then I would get what outsourcing gets you. But if I got people who know I'm in it for them, and they know I care about them and their families and their stuff, and I have to pay more for that, now they'll care about me and my family and my stuff. Because every deed is a seed, every dollar is a seed, every thought is a seed that I'm sowing into the garden of my future. I only sow the kind of seeds for the harvest I want to re reap. So hopefully that was helpful, Marquez. Good, great question, brother. Great question. Guys, I hope this, uh, watching this Q&A was helpful. Hopefully somebody in the audience asked a question that you had and you got an answer you've been looking for. And we are going to do these videos. We're going to release at least one Q&A video a month, sometimes two, depending on what our schedule is. And I hope this helps. Make sure you share it with your friends that um, we do Q&A here live at MG Studios. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.